fishing man One thing you gotta understand You ain't got no other plan When you're a fishing man So take a leaf from my book From the moment you get hooked you forget how long it took When you're a fishing man Welcome to Series 5 of Hooked On Tackle World. G'day, I'm Dave Butfield. This year, we're kicking this show off with a bang. We're heading out 100 nautical miles to Bugatti Reef. We're going out with Nomad Sports Fishing Charters. Now, this place holds some amazing fish from GTs, Spanish mackerel, and giant dogtooth tuna. Now, these are fish that can spill your reels in minutes. Now, we're taking Sir Bill Lewis. We're going to run through their paces, and uh, I reckon we'll catch some amazing fish. So let's jump on board and go and chase some fish. After a 12 hour steam out to the reef, we set the anchor and the crew kicked in the gear getting the tenders ready for our next day's fishing. With all the boats in the water, we burlied up some GTs to the back of the mothership and I set about trying to hook one of these monsters. Well here we are, we finally made it, we travelled 12 hours out to sea and I'll tell you what, we got here and we've got some good buddies around the back of the boat. So we've got some bait on, we're going to drop this over and you're going to see some of the action what we're going to do over the next couple of days. Alright, we'll see how we go. The boys are around. <laughs> Alright, we've got uh, Alex here, son of Spartan, and uh, usually he's got his shirt off, but uh, hand lining mate, uh, what size hand line you got on there? Uh, 400. 400 pound, how long you got? Uh, not much. <laughs> Alright, uh, another bait out there, you've seen what happened to me, I got wiped out in a matter of seconds, uh, I reckon you might go on the drink. <laughs> well, we'll see. <laughs> Here we go. Suck it in, baby. Oh. 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 <laughs> oh. Come on. Now we're talking about fish here over the 20 kilo mark. Just unbelievable. Come on, Alex. Oh, I got him. Someone. Got him. <laughs> that is unbelievable, I tell you. <laughs> well done, buddy. That is a fantastic fish. <laughs> We'll get this out of his mouth and we'll hold this fish up. <laughs> We've got pliers or something to get this hook out. That is absolutely unbelievable, mate. I'll tell you what, any lesser man would have went in that water and uh, that's a pretty good GT, mate. What do you reckon? Um, It'd be like 25. 25 kilos. And there's some bigger ones down there. Yeah, I'm happy one of them didn't grab one. <laughs> I'll tell you what, 400 pound hand line and uh, some muscle gets you some great fish. Maybe you want to hold that fish up? You want gloves, you're right. Look at that. That is one mighty GT and uh, hand lining. Absolutely unbelievable. <laughs> this bike is, is absolutely amazing. All right, buddy, get that back in the water, eh? Buddy. Off he goes. 
good. Well done, mate. I've got to shake your hand again. <laughs> well done. All right, let's get some baits out and get another one. Well, after Alex's effort, I feel pretty bad because I just lost one. There's still fish down there, some massive sharks, uh, but it's the GTs we're after. So I'll have one more try, and I think uh, old mate Nick, he's got a special treat for us as well, especially designed reel. All right, we got some around? Yep. Oh, yeah, we're up. Oh! <laughs> Stemmed again. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Nick, you better get over here, mate, with that reel. Coming up on the show, we take a look in Dave's tackle box and we get out to the reef for some popper and reef fishing. Welcome to Dave's Tackle Box. This week we're talking lures with Nick from Seville. Mate, it's great to see you. Now we're talking about the splasher. Yeah, well the splasher is our um, popper in the range and uh, as you can see it has a weighted keel which uh, keeps it sitting level in the water like that. That's pretty much the only popper that has a keel, isn't it? Yeah, it's the only one that I've seen actually. Um, and you can see the attachment point's pretty low on the cup face which keeps the cup presented nicely on the surface waiting for your next bloop. So Nick, how do we use this popper? Is it a blooping or fast moving action? Um, this one's a blooping popper, yep. um, so just short jerks of the rod. Um, it doesn't require a lot of effort to uh, bloop this popper with uh, the design that it has with the, the weighted keel That's over right. here yeah. and uh, the low toe point. Now we've got a large popper here, but the Seville Splasher comes in a, a large range of sizes, right yep. down to brim fishing. Yep. Uh, I've caught some brim on the, uh, on the splashes. Uh, we've got a small one here which would be great for kingfish. Yep. Uh, and also, yeah, trevally and any kind of uh, surface species like that. So, um, we've rigged this up a little bit different, have we? Yeah. Um, the way we've rigged this one up is uh, we've got a 7.0 um, shout assist hook off the head. Um, and then we've got a 80 jobu off the tail. And you can see there we've used two split rings just so that the hook is presented with the point facing upwards. Um, and that's the way that all Very tail important. hooks um, should, be, should be presented. Um, if you are rigging some lures, you can get some hooks with an inline eye like this one, um, which requires only one split ring. Um, the Jobu is probably the strongest one because this, your target species, is going to be GTs. Um, the Jobu is probably the, the hook that you want to put on you. Definitely so. a great hook, but a great lure. But if you want to check out the full range of Sabil lures, jump on the web at www.sabil.com.au. The next morning, we boarded the contender for our first day's fishing. And Nick gave us the rundown on where we were fishing. Righto, so today we're, we're anchored inside this uh, little blue hole over here. We're gonna come around the corner and fish this bit of shoaly bit over here. And in the first bit of the incoming tide, we're gonna scoot through these narrow little channels and come and fish on this outside edge of these reefs over here. So. Yeah, let's go and get stuck in, I reckon. Mate, it's, uh, it's pretty spectacular, and you wouldn't realise we're in that little area here. Uh, we're in, like, in the centre of it, and that's why we're protected. Yeah. I can see some birds saving the background there, mate. Yeah. So I reckon uh, we stop talking and get some fish. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to cast our splasher out. You can see this is the lure we're using. Uh, this is a 190 splasher. Uh, oh, we've got bait over there in the back, so that's what we're going to look for because the fish will be feeding off that bait. So we're going to ca cast it over, bloop it, bloop it, bloop it. It's hard work, uh, but make it splash like a fish is jumping on the surface, and that should attract them. And with my first cast, up came a hungry GT trying to smash my popper. We put in heaps of casts, but after that one followed earlier, the GTs weren't playing the game. We had a quick move to a school of birds, and within seconds, I was on. Well, we've just seen some birds uh, flying around. It's just exploded, and I've put a, a smaller stick shot on, and uh, away we go. It could be, uh, what do you reckon, mate? Bludger. Bludger, yeah. He hasn't taken much drag off at the moment. He's giving me a bit of a easy run, but that could change pretty quickly once we get closer to the boat. There's a little trevally, and we've got him right in the top of the forehead, so you might 
Kevin, there you go. Bit of fun on light tackle, or lighter tackle, what we've been using. Pretty common around here as well, just another trevally species you'll get through this, this area. Get this hook out of his mouth, uh, out of his head. And there you go. Nice little trevally. Uh, they get my first fish of the day in. Well, he can go back in. Off he goes. And, uh, and that's our little little stick shad. Well, it's tr uh, treat on kingfish, salmon, tailor, and uh, just casting it out, ripping it back, just a jerk, jerk, and jerk, and that little stick shad just swimming around. So I'll get that back out there and see if we can get another one. Yep, there we go. Yeah, I reckon a barracuda too. Just casting over the uh, over this reef here, we thought we might be lucky enough to get a uh, a trout. It uh, could be a barracuda. Just had a bit of a jump out of the water there, and uh, yeah, pretty common for around here. Bit of fun, but and uh, these areas are longy. Thought it might have been a barracuda, but. Uh, one thing these do have in common, they've got some serious teeth on them. Not a bad size one either, Nick. Yep. And there you go. Got some serious choppers on them, mate. A bit like a barracuda. Barracuda, a bit more bigger teeth on them, and yeah. uh, these are pretty common for this area. Yeah, a long time. And we had a, like a shark or a trout come up? Uh, it looked like a shark and then I changed my mind. It was actually a nice big trout coming in to investigate what was going on, so yeah. So I reckon it'd be a good idea to get him back in the water, my lure back in the water, and see if we can get that trout. Nice what do you reckon? When we return on Hooked On Tackle World, we hit the reefs with some soft plastics. And I have another go at the GTs off the back of the boat. To stock up on all the gear for our trip, we went straight to Tackle World Mackay. With over 40 stores throughout Australia, Tackle World is your one-stop shop for all the tackle and advice for a great day on the water. Well, the GTs won't play the game so far today, so uh, we've found a nice little reef patch. So we're going to drop down here, you might get uh, your coral trout. Uh, I've got an uh, elevator rig with a 7-inch jerk shad. Um, pink shiner, great colour. Uh, the blue shiner is another favourite of mine. So we're going to drop that down, hit the bottom and, and just jig it back up. And I've caught tons and tons of coral trout on soft plastics that definitely do work the Berkeley Gulps. So we just flicked it out. We are drifting that way, so I'm going to cast in front. So we drift back onto our plastic. Uh, get, that, get that elevator rig down the bottom, won't take long. We've got a two ounce one on at the moment. And once that hits the bottom, it's just a jig, jig, one to slake him. Jig, jig. Wind the slack in. Very, very simple to do. First drop for Corey, and he's picked up a nice red throat emperor, and on a gulp as well. I was just jigging around that reef. I don't know what I've got at the moment, but he's around the back of the engine, and it is a, a trout. Beautiful trout. And wherever you go around Australia, you'll catch trout, and they do change in colour from a dark grey or brown to a really bright red. And I've caught tons and tons of these fish, and uh, they're one of the best eating fish you can get, and one of the most spectacular looking fish as well, aren't they, Nick? They're yeah, lovely. Schools like this one pop up everywhere, and with my next cast, I just got to the bottom, and I was on again. I'm just going crazy on it because these things take you straight back into their little hole, and you don't get a second chance with trout. A couple of kicks are back in there and you've uh, snagged up or reefed up, so hopefully this is one that we can have for dinner. Nick, what's the legal size in Queensland for uh, coral trout? 38. 38, so, oh yeah, it's a bit better. See that one was caught in slightly deeper water, so it's a little bit more pink. That's right, exactly. We were talking about before how they change colours. Um, beautiful fish, but they're just a, a magnificent fish. The blue dots on them. And every trout has got that blue dot, even though they might be dark brown or really bright orange, they've always got their blue spots. And there's boys right at the front there. 
We must have come across a little patch. How big's he, mate? He'd be close, He'd I reckon. Be pretty close. Yep, we'll measure him up and uh, I'll get my plastic back over so we can get a bigger one. Oh, yes. Oh, oh my nice. That's a solid one. <laughs> this one is definitely a keeper, I reckon. God, they pull hard. Let's see, have we got a bit of red? Red freight, you reckon? I reckon you could be right. Oh, yeah. Sure was. Good pick, mate. They're a very, very pretty fish, and uh, their name says it all red throat. And as soon as Nick um, gets the plastic out, we can show you inside his mouth. Absolutely beautiful, like a, uh, a fluoro red. Uh, they're down the back of their spines here. Beautiful colours there, and uh, they are great eating fish as well, aren't they, Nick? Yeah, really good. All right, mate, well, that one can go back in. He's not legal. We've got another little trout coming in over the side. But just goes to show, just using something very simple as a, a Berkeley Gulp 7 inch. I've got a one ounce jig head on here. Uh, if you're in deeper water, what you can do is set it up as a Padnoska rig when we've got the snapper sinker on the bottom and two droppers running off the side. You've probably seen me use that before. S letting that hit the bottom. Tap, 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 little jig up, and let it sink down again. So we're working the bottom, so it has to be down uh, the bottom. Don't go mid-water. You will get snapper in that mid-water and near the reef, but uh, they're a great product and definitely do work. We had a quick move to a new reef, and we used the poppers for another hour, but the GTs just weren't on the bike. That morning, as the boys were getting the boats ready, Jason decided he'd throw a small lure out the back of the boat. He hooked a small trevally straight away. Uh, we've hooked up onto a fish already. The boys are getting the boats ready, oh, so we... Oh, he's just got smashed by GT. Oh, my... GT just taking it. <laughs> As you can see, a 30 kilo <laughs> plus GT just ate a bludgeon <laughs> trevally hole. Nick was straight onto the job, and he got Jason on board one of the tenders, as he was only on light tackle and was losing line fast. As they forged on, the Smart GT headed straight towards a bombing, about 50 metres from the mothership. And after 30 seconds or so, <laughs> won its freedom. I'm sure it's something that Jason won't forget in a hurry. Done. He's got it. <laughs> Come on. Right on the boat at the moment. He's right around near that prop, so uh, really bad angle to have this rod. All right. Uh, some of the hardest fish you'll ever come across. Uh, uh, still got him. Uh, I tell you what, amazing fish. Oh God, it's a big fish. Tell you what, that would have to be the hardest fight I've had in my life. And especially using a bigger rod, a little short stroke would have been a lot easier. But I just couldn't do nothing. I couldn't whine, I couldn't lift him. And that's the way it goes. There's some big brutes out there. After the break, we wrap up our first show on board Nomad, where I finally get a shot at a big GT. That's coming up.
Our Geronimo Jerky and Saltaway Catch of the Week winner goes to Nathan Walhuda, who caught this 118cm thread fin salmon in the Brisbane River. Well done, Nathan. I'll be sending you some Geronimo Jerky and Saltaway products for this great catch. Send your photos into Hook TV at BigPond.com for your chance to win some great gear. Well, it's round five. I've been busted up and it's not the end of the show. Uh, there's a massive GT under the boat here. So I've got my little bit of uh, meaty skin there. I'm going to drop that over. Some big sharks there as well, but this GT is very, very hungry fish. So hopefully, hopefully, cross my fingers, we can finally get one in the boat. All right, you got that boat in the gear? Here we go. Get it out. Get the rope off. Get the rope off. Get the boat. Nah, it's on the prop. Nah. I can't even see. Right. This is what it's all about. Now you wouldn't believe it, there's a few fish under there as well. Up in for the rent, Davo. <laughs> this is a great fish. And we talk about using good quality gear. This is why. 